We have got a great list of questions. Came in from Brad, Brad Reeves. Thank you very much for that one, mate. And it's all around QM2. Uh, Brad says, all the major cruise lines depreciate their fleets over around about 30 years. With QM2 now over 20 years old, it's fair to assume that she only has 10 years or so left in service. Given the immense cost of designing and building a one-off replacement for her, do you think it's possible that Carnival Corporation will sanction a replacement? Or is it more likely that when she retires, the sun will finally set on the age of ocean liners? Well, thank you very much, Brad. And look, I mean, it's true that one day Queen Mary 2 will retire, but I do have some good news for you to start off with. Um, okay. When, when Queen Mary 2 was designed, they spent a lot of time, um, the designers, particularly Stephen Payne and his um, his team, mm-hmm. um, investigating the, the service life of previous ocean liners. And, of course, at the time, the the ocean liner that uh, everybody's attention was on was, was QE2. She mm-hmm. was over 30 years old at the time that Queen Mary 2 uh, was, was put together. And uh, QE2 had a had a 30-year service envelope in the original design, as were many of the ocean liners that came before her. But QE2 ended up lasting in service just, just uh, about half a year shy of 40 years. The ship itself had a very, very strong hull. But one of the things that made QE2... A little bit tired towards the end of her service career was the fact that she had an aluminium superstructure and aluminium being mm. a lighter metal was less structurally robust i suppose over a long period of time than than steel so when queen mary 2 was designed they learned from the lessons of qe2 and built a an all steel construction of the ship with a 40-year design life in mind so yeah. the first thing is that whilst you do see many cruise ships, not, not all by any means, but many cruise ships sort of last to about that 30-year mark, the Queen Mary 2 was designed to, to eclipse that because the, the previous ocean liner that had been in service for such a long time had to endure 40 years of, of services to, to maintain that transatlantic uh, crossings. In a, in a best-case scenario, if you apply the same logic that happened with QE2, you know, that may well be extended. And how, how is that possible? Well, QE2 had a, a mid-life re-engineering, which uh, actually on, on QE2 was sort of a necessity because the original power plant that the ship had was quite unreliable. So they replaced it with diesels. Queen Mary 2 has, has di- a diesel and a gas turbine plant. But at some point in the, in the future, it may be decided that they want to you know, re-engine the ship to, to extend its engineering life because the hull is in extremely mm-hmm. good condition. So yep. the, the hull, the, the design of the, of the ship, the, the, the materials that were used in the construction of the actual um, ship's structure are all very, very sound. Um, and so there could well be scenarios in the future where the ship is given major refurbishment work and it extends her her service life out even further so i think Mm. when we look at queen mary 2 we look at have to look at her as a unique case and not compare her too much with the cruise ships of the carnival corporation fleet because she is Mm -hmm. as brad mentioned she is a one-off she is unique and that service is a very important service for Cunard and so I think what will happen is that the Queen Mary 2's service life will be extended for as long as it's feasible to keep the ship in service. Now in terms of the second part of the question, I'm in two minds when it comes to this. The the first is of course they will replace her with another ocean liner. She is the only ocean liner. Cunard is an ocean liner uh, company. It has that long heritage. The transatlantic is, you know, year on year it grows in popularity. Queen Mary 2 spends more and more time on the Atlantic. So it would make sense to, to build another one one day when, you know, I, I would say 20 to 30 years in the future when Queen Mary 2 is finally ready to retire. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of the coin, the the circumstances that existed to create Queen Mary 2 were extremely unique and very unusual. So not only did you have Cunard that had QE2, that had maintained the transatlantic crossings for so long, but they were for sale. Their company mm-hmm. that purchased them, Carnival Corporation, had Mickey Arison there who wanted an ocean liner and had an interest in building an ocean liner. So there was a commitment there that no other shipping company that was um, had even looked at Cunard as a possibility really didn't have that same drive that, that, that Mickey did. Um, then, yep. on top of that, were able to assemble a team that was led by a naval architect that had been passionate about designing a true ocean liner. And, and really, Stephen Payne, he, he led that team to such an extent that any deviation from building a true ocean liner was, 
was was guided away from by him to 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 make this ship an actual liner, not a cruise ship that's dressed up to look like a liner, not a reinforced cruise ship, but an actual yeah. proper ocean liner. And so those those situations um, uh, uh, they 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 aligned perfectly from 1998 through to 2003 when Kieran two uh, entered service to allow for the creation of a ship that you know in 2000 2003 money costs around about 800 million US dollars. So it is, it is an expensive undertaking. So I I can't say with certainty what the future will hold because when the time does come for QM2 to bow out, will those same pressures and forces and will of the of the executives be there to allow for a new ship to be built of the same specification? The only time will tell. And will they find a naval architect who will mm. understand it the way that Stephen Payne did? Um, and I'm not saying that people can't learn. Yeah. There's not a lot of very, very good naval architects out there, but he is a very interesting and unique and well-suited person for that role because of his deep understanding of the differences between the two types of ship and his unwillingness to waver on the, on the, on the design to build an actual ocean liner. So it was, I think, quite a, quite a unique set, set of circumstances that led to Queen Mary 2. That, that may or may not be repeated, and I, I couldn't possibly uh, guess which way it's going to go. Yeah, time will tell, as you say. Awesome question, Brad, and even better answer, Chris. But yeah, thank you. I think I'm getting that quite a bit lately because, of course, the 20th anniversary, people are getting a bit concerned that Queen Mary 2's time might be running running down. I mean, when I first sailed on QE2 all the way back when I was a kid, um, she, was, she was already approaching her 30th anniversary, and people were saying then, my first voyage, I remember people saying, oh, she's only got a few years left in her. Uh, people, <laughs> people don't necessarily know what's happening behind the scenes. And of course, she, she endured for over over a decade longer than she was designed for. Um, and, and Queen Mary too yep. is, is, is in many cases an even stronger um, ship structurally because she doesn't have that aluminium that doesn't have the, the weakness of, the, of that material there. And, and uh, so the hull itself is very strong. You know what they can do with interiors. Just look at Norwegian Spirit. Another ship that's yeah. a, a cruise ship, beautiful, beautiful ship built in 1990, um, not, uh, 1998. Um, and she's just had $100 million spent on her interior and looks completely new inside with a beautiful yep. classic structure. Um, anything can happen if, if the right forces are there to, to, to will for it. Exactly, exactly. Time will tell, my friend.